Number 7. Stephanie Rogina. At around 11.30 p.m. on August 26th of 2016, a police officer pulled up behind a Ford Edge that was sitting idly at a stop sign in Flemington, New Jersey. The vehicle remained motionless for approximately 90 seconds, even though there had reportedly been no cars coming in either direction. At that point, the officer, Lieutenant Scott Crater, activated his emergency lights, but the driver of the Ford turned right and sped off down the road. As recorded by the patrol car's dashboard camera, Crater pursued the fleeing vehicle for about a minute, during which the Ford swerved in and out of the painted lanes before colliding with a guardrail. The officer then approached the vehicle, which had been left disabled following the crash and began scolding the female driver about her decision to flee from the traffic stop he initiated. The woman showed signs of impairment and slurred her speech in the verbal exchange with the officer. As the interaction continued, she eventually revealed that she was a member of law enforcement herself. The 26-year-old, a rookie Scotch Plains officer named Stephanie Rogina, was placed in handcuffs on suspicion of driving while intoxicated. In spite of her attempts to obtain release from Officer Crater's custody by using her police badge. Regina was ultimately booked on several charges including reckless driving and eluding. Court documents indicated that the officer later pleaded guilty to a reduced charge of disorderly conduct and was given a non-custodial sentence that included an unpaid suspension from the Scotch Plains Police Department. Regina's case was not the first instance of a police officer facing criminal consequences for drunk driving, but it did mark a rather inauspicious start to her career as an enforcer of the law. Number 6. Jacob Malone Youth pastor Jacob Malone resigned from his position at Calvary Fellowship in Downington, Pennsylvania, after church leaders learned that he'd assaulted a teenager who'd come to live with him and his family. According to later reports, the victim had become pregnant as a result of Malone's abuse. Upon his criminal conviction in 2017, the 37-year-old man was ordered to serve between three and six years in prison. While Malone was serving out his sentence at the State Correctional Institution, Laurel Highlands, in Somerset County, state police received a tip from another inmate that the former youth pastor was attempting to orchestrate a pair of murders. Malone allegedly offered Angelo Tomeo $5,000 to kill Calvary Fellowship pastor Harold Lee Wiggins, who'd served as a key witness in his trial. The second intended target was Common Pleas President Judge Jacqueline Cody, who'd presided over his case and denied him a lighter sentence. When investigators were made aware of Malone's murder-for-hire plot, he was charged with a slew of additional offenses, including solicitation to commit murder. Malone ultimately pleaded guilty to making threats, but as of the latest updates on the matter, a sentence in hearing hadn't yet been scheduled. Number 5. Ashley Hunter Shortly before 5 p.m. on May the 11th of 2021, police officers in Miami, Florida, responded to a car accident that had occurred at the intersection of Southwest 224th Street and Old Cutler Road. Upon their arrival, they determined that the crash had been caused by the reckless driving of veteran Miami-Dade officer Ashley Hunter. During the first moments of their interaction with her, officers noted that the woman's eyes were bloodshot and watery. She then proceeded to behave uncooperatively with officers at the scene by refusing to consent to providing a blood sample or performing a field sobriety test. The resulting arrest report mentioned how Hunter slurred her speech while talking with her fellow officers before she eventually requested to be taken to a hospital for treatment. As she was being escorted to a police cruiser, Hunter reportedly had trouble standing upright and nearly fell to the ground while trying to climb inside the vehicle. She was subsequently transported to Jackson South Medical Center and, following her release, was taken into the custody of her colleagues on charges of DUI and DUI resulted in property damage. The officer was later released on a $2,000 bond and the Miami Police Department announced that they were placing Hunter on paid administrative leave pending an internal investigation into the incident. Number 4. Robert Cox in June of 2013, the pastor of the Place of Refuge Church in Manteca, California, embarked on a mission trip to Texas with his wife and a team of church interns. While passing through Las Vegas en route to their final destination, 35-year-old Robert Cox and his group reportedly stopped at the Four Kegs pub for dinner. Investigators later gathered from eyewitness testimony that the church members were accosted by a man in the parking lot of the establishment, who proceeded to launch expletive-laden threats at them. A physical altercation ensued during which Cox allegedly grabbed the man named as Link Ellingson and slammed him onto the pavement. 
55-year-old Ellingson was knocked unconscious in the scuffle after hitting his head on the concrete, at which point he was taken to Summerlin Hospital. Cox maintained that he'd acted in self-defense during the brawl, and he initially received a letter from the office of California's district attorney that maintained he would not be charged in connection to the incident. After spending six months in a coma, Ellingson's condition rapidly worsened and he ultimately passed away from brain hemorrhaging. In December of 2013, a medical examiner ruled his death a homicide and the authorities thus reopened their investigation into the June altercation involving Pastor Cox. Upon reviewing the matter further, detectives determined that there were inconsistencies with Cox's statements to the police about what had happened that night and it was later announced that he was being formally charged with Ellingson's murder. The pastor was taken into custody and spent six days in jail before the criminal complaint against him was eventually dismissed. Number three. Kerry Reeve and Adam Jackson. A pair of law enforcement officers from England's Greater Manchester area were arrested following allegations that they'd routinely partaken in the use of illegal substances from 2015 to 2017. During a 2018 hearing at the Manchester Crown Court, it was revealed that the two defendants, named as police constables Kerry Reeve and Adam Jackson, had regularly met at hotel rooms and other similarly discreet locations to keep their criminal activity a secret. As was detailed by the authorities, Reeve and Jackson had abused the same Class A drugs that they'd been working to eradicate from the streets alongside their colleagues at the Greater Manchester Police's Tactical Aid Unit. An investigation into the alleged misconduct uncovered that the officers had obtained the substances from Jackson's longtime friend, Daniel Wade. The latter and the dealers from whom he'd sourced the illicit substances were also charged in connection to the constable's frequent drug use. Jackson was reportedly jailed for 18 months after pleading guilty to charges of encouraging or assisting the commission of an offense and possessing Class A drugs. Reeve faced 31 weeks in jail herself after entering guilty pleas to two counts of encouraging the commission of offenses while believing one or more would be committed. Both Jackson and Reeve resigned from their positions with the Greater Manchester Police following their convictions. Number two. Will Smith. In March of 2022, during the live television broadcast of the 94th Academy Awards ceremony, comedian Chris Rock made a joke about Jada Pinkett Smith's shaved head while presenting the award for Best Documentary. When the broadcast cameras shifted their focus to her seated in the audience, Pinkett Smith, whose hairlessness was reportedly connected to a medical condition called alopecia areata, seemed irked by Rock's remark. Shortly thereafter, the actress's husband, Will Smith, walked onto the stage, approached Rock and slapped him in the face. The prominent musician turned actor then returned to his seat from where he shouted profanities at the comedian, warning him not to speak about his wife. Rock briefly acknowledged the assault before continuing the ceremony. In the immediate aftermath of the confrontation, many viewers speculated that it had either been a scripted sketch or a publicity stunt. Later on in the ceremony, Smith was presented with the award for Best Actor for his performance in the film King Richard. During his acceptance speech, he apologized to the Academy and to his colleagues for his violent outburst, but as others would later point out, Smith notably omitted Rock from his public apology. Although a portion of the incident had initially been censored in the United States, the uncut footage from Smith's slap was taken from international broadcasts and quickly went viral on social media. In the days that followed the incident, which made headlines around the world, a video from Smith's 1991 appearance on the Arsenio Hall show gained increased traction online as well. In the viral recording, the actor was shown making a joke about bassist John Williams' lack of hair. Public opinion had mostly been leaning towards supporting rock, and the clip caused Smith's outrage towards the comedian's similarly themed quip to be widely regarded as hypocritical. On April the 1st of 2022, Smith formally resigned his membership from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences after it emerged that he faced possible suspension or expulsion. Number 1. Michael Perot In early 2020, Georgia police officer Michael Perot faced multiple criminal charges in connection to the initial assault and eventual murder of his wife. According to the Putnam County Sheriff, 44-year-old 
Amanda Padu was found with a fatal gunshot wound to the head on February the 3rd at the residence she shared with her husband near Lake Oconee. Perot had previously been suspended from the force due to charges of simple battery and family violence. The charges stemmed from a January incident in which he'd allegedly pushed and struck his wife. The officer initially told colleagues who were investigating his wife's death that the woman had grabbed a 380 caliber handgun from their nightstand and shot herself in the midst of a contentious argument. Two days later, Officer Perot was taken into custody at his sister's home and it was announced that he'd been formally charged with his wife's murder. Local authorities in Eatonton publicly expressed their belief that Perot had spurned his responsibility as a law enforcement officer and tainted his work and that of his colleagues through his indefensible actions. In February of 2022, the disgraced officer was found guilty on all counts which included malice murder, felony murder, and aggravated assault. Perot was consequently sentenced to serve the remainder of his life behind bars. Thanks for watching. Would you rather all your friends be hypocrites or have mosquito bites that never go away? Let us know in the comments section below.